Okay, in this problem here, it gives us a figure and it's graphing f prime. So this down here is the graph of f prime. And in this figure, it actually gives us some areas here. So they're telling us something about the area under the curve, which is gonna be helpful when we're trying to find things about f, right? So the function f is defined and it says that f is zero is 10. So that just kind of gives us a starting point. We'll use that information later. In part A, they ask us to find all values of x on the open interval 0 to 8, for which the function f has a local maximum. So what do we know about local maximums? We know local maximums, so f has a local max, where f prime changes from positive to negative. This is a graph of f prime here. Why don't we just make a number line for a moment? what would go on this? Our zeros are 1, 4, 6. So 1, 4, and 6. I'm going to put on my number line, and I want positive, positive, negative, positive. So the only time that f prime changes from positive to negative is right here at 4. So we have a local max at x equals 4. And that's because f prime changes from positive to negative at x equals 4. That's our justification. Similarly, here they ask us to find all values where we have a local min. So f has a local min. That would be negative to positive, right? So f prime changes from negative to positive, and where does that happen? That happens right here at x equals 6. So we have a local min at x equals 6. Now this last part is asking us to find the absolute, the absolute minimum. So remember, when we do absolutes, we must check critical numbers and endpoints. That's so important. Obviously, in this case, since we're looking for an absolute minimum, we only need to check our local min and our endpoints. It's pretty obvious that we wouldn't need to check our local max to find an absolute min, right? So that's why. So our local min is going to be to check f of 6, and then our endpoints are going to be to check f of 0 and f of 8. Okay, so they told us f is 0, so that's 10. But what is f of 6? Well, f of 6 is going to be our starting point, and then we go up an area of two, and then we go up an area of six, and then we go down an area of three, right? That's what this is telling us. This is telling us how far the graph of f went up or down from its beginning point. So we know this is going to be 10 plus two plus six minus three. Again, this was f of zero, and we called it our starting point, right? And then this point right here is our area under our f prime graph between 0 and 6. And I did 0 and 6 because 0 was my starting point and 6 is where I'm at. And remember, to get from f prime to f, we look at f prime, the area under its curve gets us back to f, right? So that's why we're doing this. So that would be 15. Similarly, if I want to do f of 8, which is our other endpoint right here, what are we going to do? We start at 10. We add 2 plus 6 minus 3 plus 7. In other words, we were at 15, right? Right here at 15, and we just add 7 more. So we get 22. So how are we going to find the absolute minimum? The absolute minimum would just be the absolute smallest number that we just got from all this that we found. 
And so that's this number right here, 10, is smaller than 15 and 22. Therefore, our absolute minimum is f of 0 equals 10. Let me just quickly add two more things onto here. Where is f increasing? For this, since I have my number line, f is increasing when f prime is greater than 0. So that happens from 0 to 1, and I'm stopping it at 0 because my graph stopped at 0. So from 0 to 1, from 1 to 4, and from 6 to 8. Again, my graph stopped here at 8. And this is a great justification because f prime is greater than 0. And if I asked you, where is f concave up? Well, we know f is concave up means that f double prime is greater than 0. Of course, I only have f prime here. So f double prime greater than 0 means that f prime is increasing. Isn't that correct? So where is f prime increasing? f prime was increasing here from 1 to 3, and then again here from 5 to 8. So 1 to 3 and 5 to 8. And that would be a great justification right there. So that's it. In this problem here, they're showing you again the graph of f prime. So we see the graph of f prime on the interval from negative 1 to 5 inclusive, and it says that the graph of f prime has horizontal tangents at f equals 1 and at x equals 3. We can see that from the graph. And f is twice differentiable with f of 2 equals 6. So we're probably going to use that information later on. So I'm just going to box it. So part A says find the x coordinate of each of the points of inflection of the graph of f. So we know we have a point of inflection when f double prime changes sign. In other words, where f prime changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing, right? So I'm just going to say or f prime decreasing to increasing. So when does that happen? Well, I was increasing until 1, and then I was decreasing until 3, and then I was increasing. So at x equals 1 and at x equals 3, we have points of inflection. So my justification was just what I said in words. You would probably write this out a lot nicer on the AP if you were taking it, but for now that's good. So for part B, it says, at what values of x does f attain an absolute, ooh, we want absolute minimum, and then we want absolute maximum. So remember, in order to evaluate absolutes, we first need to look at the critical numbers, and then we will look at the endpoints. So what are our critical numbers? This is f prime. So why don't we just make our little sign chart of f prime? So we have our zeros at 1 and at 4. So I'm just going to do that at 1 and at 4. And we were going negative, negative, positive. In this case, right, we had negative numbers, 0, negative numbers, positive. Our only critical number is going to be at x equals 4. Four. And at x equals 4, I actually have a local min at x equals 4 because f prime changes from negative to positive, right? I had a negative to positive, which would be a min there. But I need to find absolute, so I also need to evaluate the endpoints. But you see in this problem, I don't have any numbers like I had in that other example we just did. So I'm going to just kind of make things up. Let me tell you what I mean. So I'm going to do the endpoints, f of negative 1, and at f of 5, and my critical points. are going to be at f of 4. OK, so how am I going to do this? I'm just going to make up some areas, and it's going to be relative. I'm going to do all this work in blue because none of this is exact numbers. I'm just using this as reference points so that I can come up with an answer. OK, so let's say that this area right here 
Let's call that 2. Well, if that area is 2, then this area here looks maybe slightly larger than that. Let's just call it 2.5. I don't know. And then this looks smaller. So if this is 2.5, then this might be 1, OK? Now things look relatively right. This, if this is 1, this is about twice as much, and this is like 2.5. OK, sounds great. Let's go ahead and say our f of negative 1. We can make it up. Let's just say it's 0. Let's start at 0. That's something easy. Then what would f of 5 be? f of 5 would be my starting point. Then I would subtract 2, subtract 2.5, and add 1, right? 0 minus 2 minus 2.5 plus 1. So that would be minus 3.5, right? But what is f of 4? f of 4 is just, OK, let's do my starting point. And then I subtract 2, and I subtract 2.5. So that's actually negative 4.5. So my absolute minimum is going to be at x equals 4. It's actually my local, and it's not one of the endpoints. And what would my absolute maximum be? The absolute biggest number that I ever see is, make sure you're not saying f of negative 1 equals 0 in this case. And why is that so important? That's so important because these were just made up numbers that I made up to kind of help me think about how much I need to go up and how much I need to go down, right? Because I'm looking at the area under the curve to figure out how to get from f prime to f itself. So that's really important there. So if I wanted to justify this, my justification for the absolute minimum being at 4 might be that function f decreases, since f prime is negative, it decreases from negative 1 to 4, and then it starts increasing from 4 to 5. So the absolute minimum must be at 4. And then when you want to say the absolute maximum, well, the absolute maximum is at the beginning because it was decreasing the whole interval from negative 1 to 4. And see, it was decreasing a lot more than it ever started increasing at the end. So that's a justification. Now to do part C, I'm just going to erase this number line so I have a little bit more room. And then they say in part C, let g of x be defined by x times f of x. Find an equation for the line tangent to the graph of g at x equals 2. So of course, in order to find a tangent line, I need a slope and I need a point. So why don't we start with finding the point? The point is going to be g of 2. In other words, x, which is 2, 2 times f of 2. Oh, and look, they gave me f of 2 is 6. 2 times 6, or 12. Now, how am I going to get the slope? That's going to be g prime of 2. Let's just first find g prime in general, g prime of x. So g of x equals x times f of x. I hope it's screaming to you that you need to use a product rule here. So the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So I have f of x plus x f prime. Oops, I meant to write an x there of x. So now, of course, I'm going to evaluate g prime of 2. So I have f of 2 plus 2, because that's my x, f prime of 2. So what is f of 2? Well, that is our 6 that we just said, plus 2 times f prime of 2 means what is the slope when x equals 2? And so I get 6 minus 2 is 4, and that's going to be my slope. So now my equation would just be y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. So y equals 4, x minus 2 plus 12 would be my answer to part C. And that's it for this problem.